Good morning. Welcome, welcome. Uh, we are having <clears throat> tons of rain here. I'm, I, it's time for it to slow down and maybe stop for a little while and give us a break. But uh, whatever, we, we've got, uh, I feel like I'm living in a castle. We have our moat back around our house and we've got to get out there and, and uh, dig out those drains again. Uh, they fill up fast when there's lots of rain. So I hope that you are doing well wherever you are and that your new year is off to a great start. We've got some things going on t uh, with the um, handmade quilt today. I'm going off the grid <clears throat> for this quilt uh, and for this day. I'm gonna talk about how sewing it together by hand works. <clears throat> it's all the things that you've already learned, so it's not going to be anything new it's just a little the shapes are a little bit different you have to go a little bit easier and one of the viewers that come that comes on barb has shared with me something that helped her to work through this block and i want to share that with you too so let's see how we're doing I love it. Linda's always right there. She, one of my firsties to come on. So, hi, Angelia and Hexie. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's it's good to see you. So let me work um, a little bit with you on walking through doing this by hand or machine, whichever one you want to do. And then I would like to share with you how I completely changed it up today because for me, it was a lot easier, it went quick, and I was able to get this done in a very busy, a very busy week for me. All right, so let's move to the book. And here is Lily of the Valley. Um, beautiful block, um, really love the block. And want to point out to you again that on the B pieces, which are the sides of the lily, you have four of them that are traced exactly as is in the book, and then you're going to have four pieces reversed. So make sure you pay attention to that, and if you run into an issue or anything with your set-in seams or stitching curves, those are the reference pages for those. But let's go over here and see what we've got going. The step number one is that, of course, you will trace your templates, whether it be freezer paper, um, cardstock, <clears throat> whatever you, you know, you choose to, to use to make those uh, templates. And you'll notice on the pattern that on the left-hand side, it has the B pattern and B2, which is the reversed, all right? And then you'll, we move to this C point, and as I did this block, it's been a while since I've actually sewn it together. But you really need to make sure that you pin in your markings so that that comes out even, especially at this point right here. Uh, because that makes a difference on how it fits um, as you put the block in. So once you sew those two together, you're going to sew that over the tulip and there's nothing overly tricky you you sew up to the to here pulling your seam allowances away from it and then when you turn and go up this way you're pulling your seam allowances uh, to the left and same as at the top so you, you make four of those obviously that's your your tulip um, corner um, over here when you see this corner right here, that's what you've just made. All right, then here is where, you know, you have to, again, it's, it's called careful because these are, these only finish up a half an inch um, wide. So you're, you're putting these pieces on the bottom. You are sewing that piece in the center. 
to get a unit that looks like this that you are going to be sewing on that curve. As I uh, was sewing it, I needed to clip these curves in here because they were not falling into place. And I will have to say that I tried it both with machine and hand, and they both came out um, okay. And I will say that on this one, for me, the hand sewing actually worked better than the machine um, sewing. So now you have this particular unit. You'll have four of those, all right? And you're gonna sew those units. One unit has the inserts, one unit does not. You'll sew those two together, and then you'll sew those other two units to the side and you have one 18 inch finished block. So are there any questions? I'm going to pop over here to the chat box. Are there any questions that you have concerning the sewing of this together? I'm looking at it to see. Let me... I agree, Robin. It's a great day to be in the sewing room um, with the rain coming outside. I can hear it on the um, the roof. It's, it's kind of fun, kind of nice. Okay, I don't see any questions at this point in time in terms of putting the block together. Again, you'll want to come and look at the pressing of this because what I found is that the pressing of this made a difference in how everything fell into place and how well it um, came together and kept flat and straight. So please note that your inside part of your tulip is pressed outward and the outs you know the outside of your tulip here is pressed toward the tulip so make sure that you pay attention to those couple of things and it's it it can be a challenging block Kathy if you know but take it slow and it shouldn't be that that bad um, for you so after I played with this for a while and worked at it, I thought, well, there's no reason why I can't ac um, applique it. And so that's exactly what I did. And I want to show you how I accomplished that. And so let me get the book out of the way. So the block was to finish at 18 and a half inches. So I cut a piece of the background fabric, 18 and a half inches square. I cut my Lily of the Valley templates. I only cut the B, the B2, and the center, um, the center one. Those are the only templates that I cut um, for this. And what I felt that I needed to do, I looked at how the block was constructed and with the block being constructed uh, the way it was, I took the template and I removed the quarter inch around the sides that were not going to be sewn into the block. So I left the quarter inch on this side because I am going to sew it together and I'll show you that. But I cut my seam allowance around the outside edges of this and on this one you can I, I left my quarter inch seam along the sides and the bottom and I turned I uh, trimmed the uh, top part of my template away so that I could turn over that quarter inch seam Okay, so here is that template, template A, and you can see that I have left 
the seam allowance on these sides. I am going to turn this bottom part up and so I left area for to turn that to turn that up when I got completed with you know putting the block. I used the starch method so as I um, had this laying on my fabric I used this a uh, just a cheapy little paintbrush and I painted my starch right along there. I do not touch the paper because if I get this paper um, with my freezer paper wet too many times it's not it doesn't stay nice and straight and even without um, Jane I'm not sure why you, I'm sorry I got distracted um, I am the only uh, one with a dark screen Jane says and I'm not sure why the machine is dark I've got as much light on in here but I will tell you it's raining very hard and very cloudy where I am and I don't know if that um, affects it and I have refreshed my page a couple of times um, to get it as light and as bright as I can so I apologize for that um, I'm not sure what else that I can do with that I've got um, my lights on my computer up as far as they will go um, so hopefully it will get better for you um, as as the morning progresses so I, I folded these over pressed them in when you press them in you have this little tag at the top I simply take that tag and I fold it down put some starch on it press it and it stays put so that I have this nice sharp point at the top all right so with that being said I played around and practiced a little bit on a couple other pieces so that I get this. And this is primarily what it looks like, uh, well, one side of it anyway, when you sew it in. Again, it's important to remember to mark it and watch your markings. These are folded down and this doesn't quite meet exactly the way it needs to be for this to be straight all the way down you have it a little bit off but you want to make sure that at the quarter inch these lock together so that you can start at the quarter inch and when you open it you have a nice um, v shape there without it being off all right at the bottom it works the same way you are you know sewing that in you're hitting where that comes together um, my quarter my quarter inch seam stopped right there so that hit right on that I then pressed it open um, flat like that so it was pressed open and then I took that and Put that press that in press that over starch put a little bit of starch on my paintbrush touched it and made it um, so when you turn it up you get that nice um, smooth even turn at the bottom all right and I want to talk a little bit about the spray starch that I use I use fault whoops faultless premium starch with the gold lid um, I like the the gold lid one um, as it says down here no flaking and it's that's really true I have not had it flake nor have I had the silverfish that we have here um, you know if it if I don't get back to something right away and it stays put I've tried some other things and it will start to release and I, I will need to re-iron it again but with the faultless um, premium starch with a gold cap I don't seem to have that problem and you may or may not have um, things in you know starches that you really like and that type of thing so but I wanted to share that with you so that's how I constructed for applique so let's do one block let me get rid of some of these. Um, oh, I, and I didn't share with you. I Again, I did not trim off the quarter inch seam. I trimmed it around the sides. And again, I simply took that 
um, piece that was on the end, folded it backwards, hit it with some starch, and again, you get those nice points at the top of that. All right, so I need my centerpiece, and I need my... I need my reversed pieces that I'm going to sew together. Um, yes, Kathy, I am turning the flower into an applique. And so I have turned under my outside edges all the way around, and now I'm gonna sew these three parts together. All right, so first things um, first, I need to um, put these in, make sure that they are lined up. And when I put this under the machine, where my quarter inch, I don't know with the dark fabric that I have, if you can really see, but it runs right along here. And at the quarter inch mark right there, it's where it hits that side. So those two are even at the quarter inch mark. All right, and so it should turn quite quite easily. And I'm gonna drop a pin right here. And I'm also gonna put one down here because it has a tendency because it's not quite even. Um, to move just a, a slight bit. And I noticed that when I uh, sewed a couple of the other ones together that it wanted to move a little bit on me. So let's change the camera. And definitely here, you'll want to use your leader fabric because you really don't want those bird nests at the top there. All right, making sure that I have that. So now I have, and I got just a little bit off on that one, so I may correct it later. So I have this, which I will press open, and actually, see, the, oh, I should have been, um, when you press this the right way, Lo and behold, you have that coming together exactly where it's supposed to. So I'm going to set the seam. And then I am going to press. All right. So now I have that pressed on that side, and I want to do the same thing on this side. So again, I am putting, I'm matching up my quarter inch seam lines. And again, I can see that right at the quarter inch, I'm getting my, that's where the two sides meet. So I think I should be good when I sew this. And I want to go to the bottom. And of course, I'm trying to go slow on um, the screen. And I think I probably moved that out of the screen when I was pinning it. And if I did, I, po I apologize for that. All right, let's go back to the machine. And um, put that 
Defender. So I'm going to, again, set my seam, and I want to press that. And now I will take this part, I would, um, I would put the starch on it, and then simply turn that under like that. I'm just going to finger press it for now instead of um, and so you have a a bottom that let me get that back that's one of those that you have to tuck under and starch it. So you would have your bottom piece that looks across like that one. Let me find um, one that I've already done and as you can see that flows across there here's another one um, one of the other ones that I have done and that comes straight across on the bottom so once those are done you are going to to put those into the four corners and this is where you would applique them down and what works is that if you get this point and I'm going to fold this fabric um, on the diagonal twice so that I can line this up with this corner and then, a, you know, um, a little bit um, more than a quarter of an inch away. Because if you look at the picture, um, that's how they kind of fit in really well um, with those is if you get it um, just a, a little over a quarter of an inch away from each of the corners. I'll pr I will use my acorn glue and I will um, do glue, you know, dots on it to um, hold it in place. I will hand stitch these around the outside edges <clears throat> and uh, f to applique it down. You could also use a decorative stitch from your, you know, your uh, machine. You could also uh, use an in, that invisible stitch um, or a simply just uh, an eighth of an inch all the way around the outside. All right, so whatever choice that you want to make on that, I will do the hand stitching around this. I will leave this opening because I am going to then uh, use my clover bias maker and make bias strips uh, for those leaves so I don't have to do any sewing in that. And how I accomplish that, I use the half inch clover uh, bias maker. And I will put this in my hand and I use my spray starch and I, you know, use my spray starch and get it in there and so that it's, you know, held together nicely. Then you feed your bias tape in your clover and when it doesn't push through anymore, grab a pin Grab a hold of that fabric, make sure it's, you know, it's straight in there. And then you can pull that through until it starts coming out of this end. Then um, what I do is I lay it on here, get my iron, and it should just, you know, you can just pull this along, um, push it with your iron, I hold it in place.
this is a you know pretty easy way for for me at least I think it's easy to get um, my bias tape made without too much trouble um, cut it on the bias uh, 45 degree angle all right so now I have my bias tape and actually for this one you if you didn't if you didn't have enough fabric or whatever you wanted to use and you didn't want to do the bias you could probably get by without it because it's going to be a straight you're not you're not trying to curve anything on this so you have your tulip in the corner and you would put the end underneath glue it down and put the other end underneath of the one on the other side and then stitch it down as well and your block is completed. For me this was so much easier, quicker and I got a really clean and nice look to this particular block. So um, totally went off the grid from in terms of sewing it and the you know on the signature block I think um, way back when uh, we did that the signature I did that little bit of applique again and you know it just really works for me when there's a difficult block and it lends itself to being an applique block and this is such a such a pretty block and I like that I didn't have the uh, you know it the unevenness of it and the fact that I didn't have all those seams. I was happy with that. So as I said when we started this that I was going to you know show you some different techniques, different ways to tackle a block if you you know if you struggle with something. Then if there's an easier way and you see a, a way that you can make it that works better for you then I say go for it and make make this quilt your own. And I know that the purpose of the book was to share with you handmade quilt and how to sew a quilt by hand um, from start to finish. And that's wonderful. And I have enjoyed it tremendously to go back to a little bit of my roots and do the hand quilting or the hand um, piecing on this. But there are times when I want the end result to um, eh, be something a little bit different. And the applique raises that tulip up a little bit. And even if you wanted to do a little bit more of that, put a little bit of batting underneath, cut it, you know, uh, in an eighth of an inch. Uh, shorter or something like that um, and put that underneath of it and you get a little bit of a, a raised tulip and that would be really pretty as well in terms of that so let's see if you have any questions um, Sue you are correct all the blocks are not 18 inches if you go back let me let me pull that picture back up again if you will notice we've got um, six inch blocks we've got nine inch we have 12 inch and we have 18 inch and the way they're they're put together at the end the way you sew the the quilt and we're very close to sewing this to um, this quilt together and we're we're getting close to being done which is crazy um, it feels like we just started it um, but you will see that they'll all fit together and we'll get there um, shortly on that so thank you for that comment um all right okay so i hope that you have enjoyed seeing a little bit you know my thinking process when i you know tackle um a quilt and i see a different way that i might do something a little bit different that makes it easier for me and that I can get it get it completed a little bit quicker so thank you thank you thank you and next week we will have I had to grab my book sorry about that um, we will be doing the Caesar's crown and we've done a block similar to this except the inside is not solid it's sewn together and we will be working on that we have some gentle curves on that again as well and 
you know, who knows what, as I'm sewing it together, what may happen on that. So thank you for being here. If you are in Northern California, stay dry. If you are in a part of the country that is getting slammed with snow and those tornadoes, uh, take care, be safe, and just enjoy your week and enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you next week. Thank you.